Hello makers, today we are back with another idea maker profile tuning episode and this time we're going to start looking at retractions. But we're not going to be looking at retractions from one end point to the other and make sure there's no stringing. We're going to talk about the seam. The seam is one of the painful parts for a lot of people, making sure that it's as clean as possible in order not to uh, be visible when you print an object. Now there are many things you can do to fine tune that seam and today we're going to go through some of them and hopefully it'll get you started in order to be able to fine tune the seams on your models yourself. First though, I want to point out that IdeaMaker have just released their uh, profile generator tool. It's still in beta testing phase at the moment, but you were free to use it. They have a whole list of uh, third-party 3D printers with um, pre-made profiles for you to simply download. All you have to do is just choose the printer from the list. You don't have to modify anything. You just have to keep on clicking next until you get to the download page. And once you import the profile into your idea maker, you have a basic profile ready for your printer. So make sure you go check them out at ideamaker.io um, and make sure you give them your feedback. They, uh, they as I said, it's still in beta state. Um, so there will be teething problems and they definitely want feedback on that. Now, as you can see, I've printed many test pieces myself on the Ender 3 V2. And I uh, I obviously found my, my almost perfect um, profile for the seam. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you all the steps I went through in order to get here. The first step I needed to do was obviously use my base profile as it was and print a test piece like this just to see um, how it fares. As I mentioned last time, it's a good idea to have either a video camera pointing towards the nozzle while it's printing. If it's possible to slow it down and zoom in, you can actually see what is happening. And right off the bat, I can see that one of the main issues that I have is that when it starts printing the outside layer, it detracts too much filament, creating that bit of a blob. Now, when it comes to the seam, the two most important things to note are the coasting distance and the extra star distance. The coasting distance will determine um, how much filament is extruded or when it stops extruding before the end of the perimeter. The extra star distance determines how much filament um, is extruded before it starts printing the layer. And that is, it could be in negative or in positive. Another thing that I can see is that the top surface uh, of the model is not really closed off very nicely. And that is definitely in part for the flow rate, which I believe I had set to about 95 or 96%. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm gonna set that to 100%, and then I'm gonna start playing with uh, extra star distance and coasting distance. Now in order to facilitate this process, I'm gonna put six pieces on the build plate, and I'm gonna make sure they print sequentially. Uh, once again, if you wanna know more about sequential printing on Idea Maker, check out the video, uh, which is being shown now on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Once I have them set up in the order I want them to print in. I'm going to the per group settings and I'm going to include uh, the data point that I want to adjust in each and every single piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go on to start slicing and I'm going to edit. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because when you do settings, when you do different settings on the group or per group or per layer settings, they supersede the settings, which is the general slicing parameters that you have on the main profile. And I'll go into the extruder part here. The coasting distance is set to 0.2. Now, I know that looks kind of okay. Um, it, it could possibly use a little bit more, so I'm gonna set it to 0 0.10. I'm not gonna do this setting for each individual one because the settings that I do here will apply to all models unless I throw them in the per group settings. And I'll explain exactly that in a second. So I'm gonna save this profile. I'm gonna go back to the um, uh, per group settings and I'm going to include the coasting distance. So I'm gonna search for coasting and I'm gonna enable it. Once, you cl once I click okay, you can see that it's listed there. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna set different coasting distances to each individual part on the model uh, in increments of five millimeter. I know it's going to be exaggerated a bit at the end, but it's always a good start point to know exactly um, which, which is the sort of median uh, number in order to be able to get the right settings here. So once I have entered the different coasting distance to each individual model on the build plate, I'm simply going to slice and export. Now the very important thing to note here, going back to the extra start amount that I was talking about before here, is that 
Every setting that you put in the per group settings here will basically outrank anything that you have in your basic slicing profile. So this particular parameter, coasting distance, is what will uh, will be used for the profile. Even if in your base profile you have a coasting distance of five millimeter, it doesn't matter. If you've set a different one here in the per group settings, these are the ones that will apply. So I'm just gonna slice this, export it, and send it off to the Ender 3. Now I could see a little bit of improvement in all of them um, as, the, as, the prints, as the sequential printing started progressing. The only problem is that if you look at the top of the model, you can see that the coasting or the extra star distance the more that it increased, the more the curved parts suffered because you can see from top down rather than a squished layer. And this is why I have the set piece here, this test piece with a curved uh, top edge because it shows me more exactly what is happening from top down rather than just from the side. So technically the first um, piece that printed in the sequential printing was actually probably one of the best, but it still had that sort of like microscopic indentation. Now it's exaggerated a bit on camera because because it's zoomed in but you can still feel it and when when the light hits it in certain angles you can see that it's kind of embossed and we don't want that we want that as smooth as possible another couple of things that to notice during the print is that first off the first few layers at the bottom there, there seems to be like an elephant's foot. That's not exactly mechanical. The one thing about Idea Maker is that you can set different parameters to the bottom solid layers and the top solid layers. And I can see that there's like four layers at the bottom which are being inflated. So I can definitely compensate those with the solid fill layers. Another thing I noticed is that the model has two perimeters. And when it moves from the inner perimeter to the outer perimeter, it actually retracts. And I don't want that to happen. I want it to be a seamless kind of movement from the inner layer to the outer layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove like five test pieces from the build plate and just use one. And rather than going into the slicer and changing quite a few things, uh, I'm going to use the, uh, the per group settings here. I'm going to add the outer shell wipe distance feature. And once I do that, I'm going to set it to five millimeters. Basically, once it finishes the perimeter, it wipes the nozzle five millimeters. I'm going to look for force retraction on layer change. Basically, I'm going to disable this because I don't want the nozzle to retract when it's moving one layer up. I also want to uh, include the force retraction before traveling to outer shell. And that is what I was mentioning that I want that seamless inner to outer perimeter movement. So that enables, or better yet, disables the retraction from the inner to the outer shell, making it much more fluid and in turn producing a better result. And finally, what I've noticed is that uh, the infill in the beginning, it's kind of sort of like under extrudes until it pressurizes the nozzle. So what I can do there is include the avoid retraction inside model option and make sure that's disabled as well. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the advanced settings and I want to fix that uh, kind of like elephant's foot that there is. So I'm going to set the bottom solid fill flow rate to 95%. And apart from that, I'm also going to change the bottom solid fill extrusion width percentage to 96%. Now keep in mind that these options here are calculated when you go into the advanced section, you have a primary filament flow rate. Now we've said that 100%, so the flow rate here will be 95% of that 100%. So for example, if on the primary filament flow rate, I have 95% and on the solid fill rate, it'll be 95%. That's going to be 95% of the 95%. Just want to make sure that you all guys understand that. Once that's done, I'm gonna send it off to print and test it out again. This is when the model started looking much better. The seam was becoming much cleaner. There was less of an indentation. It's actually quite smooth when you feel it with your fingers here. Um, and even if you set it to light, um, it, it just looks much, much cleaner. The only issue I was still having is the top layer. But that's okay because that's also mitigated within Idea Maker profile. So we're going to jump back to Idea Maker. I'm going to go into the advanced settings of the filament profile and I'm going to go to the solid fill tab. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, increase the top solid fill extrusion with percentage because I wanted to fill 
uh, the gap in between the layers. And I think 105% should be just right. Apart from that, I'm gonna to go to the per group settings and I'm going to include the apply coasting on grid infill and lines solid fill. I want to disable this because I want to make sure that coasting is not included in the top and bottom solid fill lines and that should help. So once again, final test piece, send it off to the Ender 3 and see how it goes. And for the final test piece, we kind of have a winner. I'm very happy with this. Now, a couple of things that I need to make sure you guys understand. First of all, um, you might need to redo all these settings for each and every single filament that you use. You might not use it or you might not need to change it for um, the same PLA from a single company. Um, you might need to do it for different colors. Like for example, the white might need different settings than yellow, for example. Um, but you will definitely will need to do all of this again um, from one company to the next, or better yet, from one filament type to the other. So PLA, ABS, PEG, you're definitely gonna to have to run through these settings again to find the perfect settings. Now, in my case, I used a transition spool. This starts from silver and then it goes into blue. So the, uh, the filament width might not be perfect, which is why I might have some uneven lines. They don't look that bad. Um, and to be completely honest, it actually looks very good. But if you put some really hard light into this um, or against this, you can see the unevenness. It's not that much, but it's there. So just so you guys know. Now these settings might actually need to change if I change other parameters that kind of link to this. So for example, currently I have five millimeters of retraction. If, uh, and it's set at about 40 millimeters a second. If I change that to 60 millimeters a second and five and a half millimeters of retraction, I might need to go through this test again, which is why it takes time to fine tune a filament profile. But if, if you take your time, you do all the t these tests, you find the right speed, you, f you adjust the right settings, then your filament profile will, uh, will turn out absolutely great and all your prints will, will turn out amazing. Obviously, taking into account that your machine is set up correctly, all your bolts are tight, because the first print that I did, uh, I had my Y belt, uh, which was a bit loose, and, and this is what it turned out, and that looks absolutely abysmal, but thankfully it was just a matter of tightening the belt. So that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you check out Idea Maker on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. In the meantime, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications so you're always aware when uh, one of these videos comes up. And um, yeah, as always, Happy making, guys.